So we're going to start taking a look at the Terra node itself now. And here we have, uh, this is a video, the live bit's coming. Here we have uh, the same pipeline uh, that we just described earlier. Uh, and this is actually a live view on a dashboard. We expose a lot of metrics in the Terra node that can be uh, uh, displayed visually in this sort of dashboard format. And this is a simple version, but it's not actually the version that we're using today. This is a slightly more complex version. Um, and in fact, it actually has two pathways for validating transactions. Transactions that have a relationship to each other can be uh, validated in a much more optimal uh, way if you know in advance that they have a relationship. And so down the bottom, you actually see the same pipeline that we were looking at before. And the top is another pipeline that is optimized to, uh, to handle uh, related transactions. And you can see over there on the right-hand side, there's a uh, validate inputs handler. And they are uh, both kind of branches of the pipeline join and connect to each other at this point. So let's actually take a look at a working live Terra node. This is a dashboard that we use for uh, what we call ramp up tests. Um, when you put together a configuration, uh, which is basically deciding what handlers run on what nodes uh, and what pipelines you're actually using, we need a way to understand its capacity because no system has unlimited capacity. And if you start feeding more input into a system than it can handle, things will start to break down and go haywire. So you need to understand the capacity so that you can actually throttle the input um, on the, uh, on, at the entry point. And this dashboard here just shows us pipeline latency. And that is, how long does it take from a transaction to get uh, injected into the Terranode framework until it gets validated and put into a block template? And down the bottom here, we have uh, a little more, uh, <coughs> a couple more gauges that show transaction submission rate and transaction validation rate. So I've just been running a, uh, a Terra node in the background. Uh, that's what I started when I was, um, uh, when I got onto the stage. And now we're actually going to try a real live ramp up test. This is a deployment script. We've got 10 servers in a data center in Germany that we use for this. Uh, this sort of testing, um, and we're firing it up right now. And what we're actually looking for, it'll start to pop up in a second. Um, we're looking for the point where latency starts to increase. That is, more messages are coming into the system than the system can actually handle. And so what happens is they start to build up in a queue, and you'll see the time it takes from when you send it into the system to when it pops out the other end will start to increase because they're sitting in this queue for a period of time before they even get to, get to start. Um, so we designated 100 milliseconds as uh, the, the failure point. Uh, if latency goes over 100 milliseconds, we consider that to be the capacity of this configuration. And this ramp up test is slowly uh, increasing the, the rate of input. Uh, that's over here. Uh, we've got a rate limit about 20,000. And over here, we've got a graph of the same. The yellow is the actual rate that transactions are being validated. And the green is the rate that we're feeding them into the system. And you'll see that they hug each other pretty tightly. And OK, so right now, we've actually just crossed the fail threshold. Remember, this is two cluster nodes, or C nodes, we call them internally. So we can take this failure threshold, and we can see we've got around about 25,000 transactions per second. Uh, for reference, we don't think that the Bitcoin SV software would be able to handle uh, a validation rate uh, like that at this point in time. So you can see that the latency is just shooting up sky high now. Um, that means that the system is, is overloaded. So we know that we can run this safely in the 20,000 transaction per second range. So let's test horizontal scalability. Now we're going to start exactly the same configuration, but we're going to do it using four nodes instead of two. Now, this will actually create additional load on the system because whilst we break, uh, break pipelines up in parallel, there are actually points where they have to talk to each other. And we call that cross-shard communication. Um, so you don't expect to get perfect horizontal scalability because you will uh, basically increase the amount of network throughput that is happening. Um, this is an example. Uh, here we go. Yeah, this is an example of the network usage uh, under that particular configuration. So you can see that as it was ramping up, the network usage increased. 
and you can see that the CPU usage increased. This is pretty much the fail point when the CPU started to get saturated. So this one is creeping up. It's well and truly past the, uh, the point where the two node configuration failed. And we're just about to cross the fail threshold right now. So let's take a look at where we got to. Uh, we are there. And we can see we've got about 50,000. So um, that's actually almost close to perfect, which is unusual. Um, but uh, I guess the demo gods are smiling on me today. <laughs> Um, this particular configuration isn't completely optimized. Uh, there are um, all sorts of optimizations that are still available to us because we've been focusing on the framework itself. We have run this in a, in a, uh, across all 10 nodes, and I have actually seen uh, volumes in excess of 100,000 per second. I wasn't quite brave enough to try that one today uh, live on stage. but. Um, there we have a, a real-life example of a Terranodes uh, that, that is able to scale. If I had more time, I would show you one that's actually running at a uh, steady state capacity and show that it actually can continue for uh, a long period of time without, uh, without any problems. Different backgrounds, diverse geographies, and disparate experiences can all inspire ideas that lead to breakthroughs. And with blockchain, we've barely scratched the surface on its potential. So what's next for this breakthrough technology and where can it take us? That's where you come in. Learn to leverage your creativity and harness the power of blockchain technology to tackle the biggest challenges of today and opportunities of tomorrow. Discover how you can make your ideas a reality with BSV the only blockchain that scales unbounded, offers a stable platform with world-class security and the support of a global community of experienced, knowledgeable developers. Join the fourth BSV Virtual Hackathon and let's build the future on the blockchain.